I am by no means a Hamtaro fan. The cartoon rarely aired when I watched TV, but the brand has surprisingly left an impression on me with its merchandise. My sister and I had some random kids meal toys when we were little, and one of our favorite things to beg our parents to buy for us were Hamtaro trading cards. A single pack would pop up at our Target like once a year, and collecting all 30 cards was one of our life goals. I'm not kidding, I bought a booster box a couple years ago just to finish this thing. That's how big of a deal it was. But what made me love Hamtaro even more was this video game. Hamtaro Ham Ham Games. It was one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games growing up, which isn't saying much when these were my options. This particular game is my sister's, so most of my exposure to it was watching her play it from behind the couch, or next to her in the car. But from the few times she let me play, I loved it. For a long time I was considering buying a copy for myself just so I could have my own file. And 15 years later, I finally did it. the first annual Ham Ham Games, a gathering of hamsters to play some sports not in Athens 2004. We control Hamtaro and Team Ham Ham, and our goal is to beat the competition and earn the most gold medals. The other teams we'll be facing are Team Rainbow, Team Sea Hams, and Team Jungle. Rainbow is led by Bo, who is the event organizer, and his harem of girls are dominant in every event. The team is pretty forgettable except for Ivy, because she has a Southern Belle accent, I do declare. The Sea Hams are led by Captain Hamstern, and they're all supposed to be pirates, but I was more enamored that one of their members is named Hambone, because all it made me think about was... Ham bonin. It'll save your life someday. The last team, Team Jungle, is a group of dwarf hamsters dressed up as other animals, and I've never wanted to play as an NPC more in my life than right now. The game doesn't have many storylines, but my favorite is the one about Warts the Frog changing his outfit to a hippo and then a tree. It's just so stupid, I love it. The Ham Ham games last for 7 days, and during that week there's 15 events to compete in. They're all organized in a schedule where 3 sports are played a day, with the first and final days being cut short for the opening and closing ceremonies. Since the game is inspired by the Summer Olympics, you'll compete in a bunch of track and field events. You got your 100 ham meter sprint, your hurdles, hammer throw, chicken back riding, yes sir! All the essentials are here along with sports like swimming, diving, tennis, and volleyball to balance the selection. I just hope they include a game about plucking root vegetables. One of my favorite things about these games is how they overcomplicate the controls just a smidge to make them more difficult. Like, timing is super important in half the events, and I appreciate how strict it is regarding accuracy. If you aren't frame perfect, you're getting a bronze medal. This is the Olympics, honey boo. You get it right or you get on the bench. In triple jump and pole vault, for instance, there's a section where you need to tap the A button at specific times while you're sprinting to speed up. And when it's time to jump, a moving bar will appear that you need to stop at its peak to increase your height. Getting the timing right for any of these is difficult, which also makes them very replayable, since the games are short. And if I had to rank the sports, the top half is all timing minigames because of that replayability factor. The 100 hand meter dash and hurdles wouldn't be as enjoyable if all you did was mash a button to run. And the hammer throw is great because you're instead holding A for short bursts, while subconsciously needs a count to calculate how many frames it takes to let go of the button. Swimming gives you four different control schemes and speeds to switch between, which kinda makes the game feel sloppy, but once you get a rhythm going, you will feel like a swordfish. And speaking of rhythm, synchronized swimming makes you time your button presses to music, adding another twist to the simple gameplay of pressing a button when the game tells you to. Diving is one of the worst games, and its timing requirements are so strict that only a taskbot could do them. You not only have to quickly press the buttons the game tells you to before entering the water, but there's a secret timer you need to follow too. On the harder rounds, I'm lucky if the first three buttons are perfect, but it's a miracle if I can even hit every button, period. But I saved the best timing minigames for last. There's Carrot Pull, which I better see in the 2024 games. You better be watching this, Your Excellency Mr. Thomas Bach, President of the International Olympic Committee. I don't want to have to make a phone call, and you know I don't like making phone calls. You give me that tuber tug, that genus docus kaplakis. In Carrot Pool, you pluck carrots, and you're supposed to figure out when to press A by looking at Hamtaro's Vanta Black Mouth. I shit you not, this was the best they could do, but man is it satisfying pulling perfect carrots. On many occasions, I have booted up the Ham Ham games just to play this for an hour straight. It's that good. And perhaps even better is the Marathon, where you have to tap to a rhythm that speeds up or slows down depending on how well you're doing. I don't know what runner's high is, but the feeling of a two minute round has got to be on par with that. I'd even be down for a 10 minute version of this. The song, the changing beats, and the euphoria are just sublime.
Among the non-timing sports, there's archery, which feels like a luck game more than anything. I'm just not patient enough to master this one. Sailing is perhaps the weirdest of the bunch, since it uses a 3D environment with wind physics that pushes your boat around, making it feel really sluggish. Tennis and volleyball once again prove that tennis and volleyball have no business being video games. And chicken back riding, what an adorable alternative to equestrian. I barely have anything to say about the characters of Hamtaro, but Penelope will always be my favorite, and seeing her featured in this minigame is perfect. There's not much replayability to this one, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the greats. So those are the 15 events, and I'd say it's a fantastic collection. It holds up today, but there's another reason I'm so fond of this game, and that's the world design. In between each event, you have the opportunity to explore the different stadiums, and the aesthetics of these areas have always stood out to me. The stadium is made out of building blocks, the swimming events take place on this tree stump with a pool of clouds on top, I love the tire and tin can aesthetics of the tennis court and TV studio, and seeing locations like a lawn and beach from a smaller perspective are fun inclusions, and when the sun sets and the colors of the outdoor areas change is just perfect. And it's the small things about these maps I love, like the objects you can interact with to collect sunflower seeds. You spin one bolt, you gotta spin another. The downside to the maps though is how tiny they are. I swear they were larger when I watched my sister play, but every location is only a few screens big. What you'll actually want to do on the maps is talk to the other Ham Hams, which admittedly is a waste of time. I've mentioned the storyline about Warts the Frog, but in some conversations you'll learn about how Team Sea Ham wants to recruit a girl, and Cappy spends most of the game looking for a hamster named Stucky. And there's no side quest linked to any of this stuff, asterisk. You just read it and probably think to yourself, huh. I could have wasted this time watching High Jello. Yeah, okay. The real reason anybody should be out and about in between events is to watch TV at the clubhouse, because even the best athletes rot their brains staring at a screen. There's nothing like a little QVC. They only sell costumes that are too small for your hamsters, but it's the only thing you can spend your sunflower seeds on, and I wouldn't have it any other way. When you start up the game, you get a dwarf hamster as your avatar that can be dressed up with these costumes. And this was the highlight for my sister and I. These costumes are so adorable. The cat's my favorite. I also think it's funny how the TV hamster is perfectly positioned behind the costume every time Hamtaro receives one, but what's the purpose of this? Well, let's ignore that question and get into the most unfulfilling rabbit hole you'll wish you never knew about. When you make your avatar, you can choose your birthday, and allegedly your zodiac sign determines which of four groups of a dozen costumes will appear in the shop. Now I can't confirm this since my sister and Seth's chicken noodle soup eating ass are both Aquarius, and I'm not about to reset the game for something so trivial. But now you're probably not wondering what's the point of having costumes exclusive like this. Well, check out the back of the box. This bad boy is compatible with the link cable, so let's go over to the Ham Ham link menu and pair these games together. Doing this lets you trade IDs and one costume, and you're not going to believe this, there's unlockable content for linking with different players. Is it good content? If you have 50 friends with Hamtaro Ham Ham Games, you can unlock a different title screen. You know what you can't do with 50 friends, let alone one? Play Carrot Pull? Or any of the events with them? And people wonder why Alpha Dream went bankrupt 15 years later. Good news, if you have two copies of the game, you can reset one of them over and over again for a hashtag life hack moment but you still have to beat the game at least six more times to transfer every costume onto one file. Well, I know what I'm doing with my pay time off. The other TV program you can watch between events is Miss Cleo. I called in because the first three minutes are free, but they put me on hold for three minutes and now I got a bill of 200 sunflower seeds. It's bullshit! Every day there's a different fortune which ranges from terrible to excellent luck, which equates to one of the stadiums having a random reward to find, and on the extreme days you have the opportunity of finding a costume. Allegedly there's a night broadcast that sells costumes, but I have no idea how to watch it. A few more can be found outside the stadiums by interacting with certain items, and the jungle costumes can be obtained by going to the Athletes Village on day one, on the second, third, and fourth playthroughs. The last two worth mentioning are achievements. You get a treasure chest costume for getting all 15 gold medals in a playthrough, which is really easy on the lowest difficulty. There's also this costume of Earth that's unlocked if you break the world record on every event. So to re-ask the question, what's the purpose of costumes? Nothing. The cosmetics you don't get to see, your friends don't get to see them. I'm not even attached to this hamster, they could have at least turned it into a virtual pet game. Like for real, this is the most shallow and pointless multiplayer experience ever. If I don't remember your birthday, the last place I'm checking is your goddamn Hamtaro Ham Ham Games ID.
If you win the Ham Ham games, the second playthrough allows you to collect Hamigo cards, which are IDs but of the Hamtaro characters. I know, it's real exciting getting to find out what Zodiac sign Borange is. This is padding that shows potential, but flops for the most part. Every Ham Ham has a card to collect, but most of them are earned just by talking to those characters. A few require you to do a side quest like chasing Robo Joe by talking to him from a certain direction every time he moves. The Rainbow Baby IDs make you run around the TV studio to find them in order from red to violet, and hey, one of them is to find Stucky. And while these are simple tasks, having only like four of these is super disappointing. Some of the harder cards to collect are by finding characters that only appear in one location during certain parts of the day and week, but with those at least you feel like you earned them. Come on, make me complete an objective within the sports like pulling 20 perfect carrots or clearing the chicken course without getting a foul, because talking to NPCs is not rewarding gameplay. Collecting all 50 cards gets you a different version of the credits that shows them off, but let's stay on the credits for a minute because it is super surreal seeing Iwata, Miyamoto, and Leslie Swan listed here. For the uninformed, some Hamtaro video games were developed by Alpha Dream, a partner studio of Nintendo who you might recognize as the creators of the Mario and Luigi franchise, and that definitely explains the amount of polish this game has. But back onto the subject of cards, clearing the game three times rewards you with Laura's friend card, and five completions gets you Travis's. Worth playing for? I mean, if it gets you one step closer to 50 friends, there's also one more unlockable for getting 50 friend cards, and it's an arcade game you can play in the clubhouse. Normally you just have this basketball one inspired by the fire game and watch, and based on the screenshot, the new one looks like it's a copy of Octopus. Overall, I still think Hamtaro Ham Ham Games is really fun. It's pretty short, especially if the dialogue and costumes aren't appealing, which makes this a great game for... Well, I'd say road trips, but it's going to be pretty hard getting the GameCube to work. I know every Game Boy game and their mother tried to be a minigame compilation, but the Ham Ham Games firmly sits as the best one not about the Athens 2004 Olympics. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and grow, and subscribe to get updates on my uploads as soon as they happen. But until then, I will see you all next time.